Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. Yesterday night, ICT Cabinet Secretary Joe Musheru was at an interview and he made some remarks. Remarks I want us to have a look here for they are going to form the basis of our analysis and discussion right now. Listen into this. I also have many different reports that I actually see mm -hmm. and those reports show that the numbers uh, continue to change and uh, are in favor of uh, Raila and uh, you know now bringing Martha and Kalonzo coming in. We've seen these numbers have increased. Now it's even over 64 percent. So, so it's not uh, wrong to tell someone if they have asked you a question, you can give them an answer. And that's where that came from. So no wrong from where you see state I, operatives I see, being involved in the anything. campaign of one candidate against it's another. Not, it's not a campaign. Uh, P.S. Kibisho did not say vote for this person or do this. He was asked what are the numbers showing. You give the, what the numbers are showing. It doesn't it's mean that that is his numbers. opinion. But it doesn't mean it is his opinion that, that it should be this way or that way. He says what it is. NIS report is to the, the public. Table, is the table yellow or white or green or blue? You say what the color is. You're not giving your specific opinion. So I don't see uh, any fault in that. Let's talk about um, the issue again. You just touched on it. And, and we've gone through some of the information as to what partly informed the nullification of the election. Right. And I wonder whether from where you see it, you're starting. Yeah. This is not the first time Joe Musheru is making those remarks. So in this video, I want us to dig deep to see the main political objective why Joe Musheru keeps repeating those words. In case you are watching us for the very first time and so far you have not yet subscribed, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. For those keenly following William Ruto's brand of politics, even before Joe Musheru came out in public to start talking about NIS and even before Karanja Kibichu also came out, already William Ruto and his team, because of their loose tongue, already they were propagating some lies that according to NIS, Ruto was on the lead. William Ruto and his team, for quite some time, they were trying to create such kind of propaganda. They were propagating such kind of kinds of falsehood. So I'm seeing a government team, the one that is considered the deep state, hmm? the one that is considered to have knowledge of what maybe might be happening within NIS, they are now just coming out to respond to William Ruto. They just want to actually kill that lie or that propaganda William Ruto and his team have all along been using. Because, you know, if you give William Ruto time and you don't respond to him, he can actually create a narrative repeatedly and Kenyans can actually start just, can a good majority of Kenyans can believe that kind of a narrative. And I know that in the event, Joe, the likes of Joe Musheru and Karanga Kibichu could have not come out in public to talk about Raila leading, then some Kenyans could have actually go, gotten confused into believing William Ruto's narrative that according to NIS, he was actually beating Raila Odinga. So Joe Musheru and largely the deep state, they are just coming out in public to kill that lie, that propaganda by William Ruto. And then secondly, I'm seeing Joe Musheru and even Karanja Kibichu playing what we call smart politics. They are trying to create a perception. And they're trying to create a perception that Raila Odinga is headed for a landslide win. And that kind of a perception has the potential of actually influencing or rather convincing the undecided voters to cast their votes for Raila Bolo Odinga. 
because in one way or the other, they are seeing that now this is the winning team. And you know, in the bandwagon kind of effect, the undecided can decide to believe with the majority in what the majority believes in. That's the strategy I'm seeing with Karanga Kibichu and now Joe Musharo. And they are repeating that consistently to actually sell and create that kind of a perception. They are just trying to cleverly campaign for Raila Odinga. And then if you look at it again, I'm seeing a Joe Musheru or even a Karanga Kibichu who might just be saying the truth as it is. They might actually be honest that according to their intelligence, Raila might be leading and he might be leading with over 60%. That can also be true. And I'm saying that based on the fact that if you look at the map of Kenya, I'm seeing Raila beating William Ruto in all the regions except in Kalenjin Rift Valley. For the mountain region, that is so slippery. You cannot actually predict or even tell who is going to win the mountain vote. But from where I sit, I believe Raila Odinga will most definitely, if he plays his politics well, he will beat William Ruto on the mountain. So I'm seeing a Karanja Kibichu, a Joe Mushero, who are also just trying to be honest. Because even conventionally, if you look at it objectively, I'm not seeing William Ruto beating Raila Odinga in any part of the country save for Kalenji Rift Valley. So it might be true that Raila might be ahead of William Ruto. And also if you look at some opinion polls, if you look at the trends, the trends are indicating Raila's popularity rising as William Ruto's popularity declining. And just yesterday, the Star newspaper, the one that has been giving William Ruto a very big lead over Raila Odinga, yesterday for the very first time, captured Raila Odinga getting 51.5%. That's the Star newspaper. Something, a, a newspaper that has been giving William Ruto a very big lead over Raila Mulo Odinga. Now they are insinuating that Raila is at 51.5%. And if only you can project that, then you can see hmm, that in the coming weeks, Raila Odinga's, Odinga can actually extend his lead in a very big way. Because if for a very short time, in fact, in less than two months, according to the star, Raila has come from 14 to 51% in less than two months. So I'm seeing maybe NIS just trying to look at the bigger picture of the eventual vote results come August this year. That's also what I'm seeing here. And then as I conclude, I'm seeing a Joe Mushero and even Karanja Kibichu, who are just trying to maybe create a narrative, something similar to what we saw with Mutai Nguni in 2013. In 2013, Mutai Nguni created a tyranny of numbers, and actually Uhuru and Ruto rode on that tyranny of numbers to win, the, to win presidents in 2013. So I'm seeing the likes of Joe Mushero and even Karanja Kibichu trying to create a narrative. A narrative that Trailer Odinga will use to make sure he attains at least over 64% as Joe Mushero is trying to allude here. And I won't be wrong also to conclude that looking at politics as it is today in Kenya, those figures being uh, given out by Joe Mushero, to me, they look a little bit realistic. Raila might actually attain 60 and above in this year's presidential elections. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, let me stop it there.
but in case you've bumped here for the very first time kindly subscribe give this video a like and to our fans our subscribers here i'm very much humbled very grateful for the kind of support you are giving me here god bless you god bless kenya to any other person watching us outside kenya for the very first time drop a comment let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from and if possible again subscribe give this video a like thank you god bless you god bless kenya